Hi there, today I want to look at protecting vape cells. One of the problems, or other lithium cells, but one of the problems with vapes is that they come with protection built in into the little sensor device in the form of this chip which is here. And this chip then uh, protects the cell it protects it actually I think down to about 2.5 volts for discharge and about 4.2 volts with charging and it also protects it for short circuit as well so it's a brilliant little chip but no use to me because it only stays on for 10 seconds so you can switch it on keep it switched on but after 10 seconds it will go off so it isn't much use for what I want so therefore I've got to go into the idea of using these protection boards with their protection on and also it's got a proper charge chip which should handle the constant current constant voltage sort of charging that lithium cells are supposed to need these are pretty good and I've used them in some projects. There's one here that I've used. This then is a sort of automatic light. Up at the top there we've got the chip, uh, the board, the protection board with its, pro, uh, with its charging chip on it. And on the end I could just cut a hole in the end so I can plug a USB into it and charge the device. That's brilliant for that particular device, but what about if I want my electric toothbrush? My electric toothbrush then, I want to put cells into. This one's an old one, I've actually used an 18650, but the principle's the same. I've got a protection board on it, which connects in here, and this will also connect on to a charger. Uh, the charger... Uh, isn't doesn't need to have protection on it so we can use one of these charger boards so I've sort of got this inside my toothbrush because I don't want any wires or sockets coming out because it might get damp in uh, this particular this particular protection board it works in a similar way as to the one on these boards in as much as it has a DW01A protection IC up here uh, which is the brains of the device and measures the voltages and switches it on and off and this is the power device that actually switches on and off this particular case it's an 8205A but 6 pin and on these particular devices it's an 8 pin device with the two sources connected together so if we have a look at the circuit here we can see we have the two sources S1, S1 and at this side S2, S2 the reason for this I assume is because of the current that this particular device can take which is something like if I can get to it over here 6 amps so this is taking 6 amps whereas I think that these little uh, six pin devices can only sort of take three amps if we look at the circuit that we've got we've got the two drains connected together and at one side we have a FET and at the other side another FET which is a mirror image these also have diodes across them so that current can always flow from source to drain source to drain but only when it's switched off can it, it switched on try again when it's switched on can it go from drain to source so yeah that's what this chip is and that's what I want to look at today if we look at the actual circuit diagram for the protection board then we've got our DW01 and which is the brains as I say and the power here so we have one wire coming to the this FET uh, and this is the over drain FET and then we've got the other one here, which we can call the overcharge FETs. So this board will only conduct if it gets a 
positive on the over drain or a positive on the over charge as soon as it wants to switch it off switches this off or switches this off and this board stops working so that's how they sort of operate so what do I want to look at today well the first thing I want to look at is the sort of current that we can get out of one of these boards so if I zoom in a bit maybe I can see there what we've got here is one of those boards wired onto uh, so it plugs into a voltmeter we've got the wires I've used thick wires so that I'm not losing any voltage across the wires and a minimum sort of voltage drop across any of the connections so yeah that's the board wired in so what am I going to do I've got about 4.1 volts coming in so if I measure it on this voltmeter uh, about 4.09 actually but who cares and then we have about 10 amps on this meter that's the current out and here we have the voltage out so hopefully we can see that we've no current out but we have a voltage out to measure the load then I'm going to use some resistors four resist well a number of resistors for one ohm resistors so this is 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm. So if I come to this end, I've got 4 ohms. I've also got some out would come in half ohm resistors. So this would be 3 and a half, 2 and a half, 1 and a half. And this is a quarter ohm resistor. So that would give me 1 and a quarter. So let's try, put the load on. And hopefully what we see is... With 4 ohms, we have about 940 milliamps. If I go to 3 ohms load, then I have about 1.25 amps. And if I go to 2 ohms, about 1.8 ohms. Go to 1.5 ohms, and I get about 2.35. And if I go to 1 and a quarter ohms, then I've got 2.7 amps coming out. However, if I go to my 1 ohm, then I get 3 amps coming out, but only for a very short period of time. In other words, the board switches off at about 3 amps. So I'm not going to get more than 3 amps out of that board. So yeah, so that's the uh, current out. It shows it is protected. It shows it won't give out excess current. But the next thing I want to do is to actually look at the output chip, the 8205, and see how that actually works. Uh, as I've said, we've got two sort of setups for this. We've got the th six pin and the eight pin versions I'm looking at the six pin version uh, so I've mounted it onto a piece of Vera board here we have it on Vera board uh, use little wires coming off it solder them onto the legs and then onto the Vera board also on the Vera board then I've got pins going down so that I can put this onto a breadboard so if I have a look at my breadboard uh, here where's my breadboard let's see if we can find my breadboard right so we have our breadboard down here uh, with uh, put a meter on each side hopefully we can switch those on so we have no volts on that side and no volts on that side if I switch the switch over then nothing happens why isn't anything happening that reason is because I need to plug the breadboard in so I plug it in make sure I get it the right way around that's that in now. Now the LEDs on the breadboard have lit up. So I am actually getting the power now that I want. 
So now if I switch this switch on, I get my 3.8 volts. And if I switch this switch on, I get about the same. Not very accurate these meters, but I only want to show that I'm getting power to the board. So that's my board with my chip on it. If I move it across, maybe that's a bit too far in. Move it back a little bit. Way. Uh, there I've got my two meters. So how have I wired this up? Well, we need to have a look at the circuit. And if we look at the circuit, what I've got is... Uh, what I've got is, I've got my FETs uh, in the middle, my dual FET chip. I've got red and green LEDs on the load on this source here. And red and green on the source here. Uh, these bi-directional so I can tell which way the current's going. For my first circuit, for what I want to do to look at to start with, is to check on the diodes. Let's see if these diodes actually work. So if I connect positive to this side and positive to this side and the drains to no volts. Now normally these wouldn't be connected but I'm going to connect them to see what happens. So I put positive on that side, positive on that side. I'm going to up my voltage a little bit uh, which is a bit naughty, but I need it to get the L dual LEDs to light. So let's try this then. Positive, uh, negative there. Negative in the bottom of the drains. And now the two drains are connected. And we can see we've got a green LED on this side and a red LED on that side. Why should that be? Well, let's have a look. What we've got is positive comes down here through the green, down into uh, the source here, down through this LED, down through and down into no volts. So that's why that green LED is light. If I come down here, then what I've got is that coming down through the red LED to the source, down through this diode and down here. So that shows us with the FETs held off by these two resistors, uh, then we still get a light because it's traveling through these diodes. Can we see those diodes work? What about, what about if we wanted to see the FETs working? So what we can do then is instead of having both sources to connected via the load to positive connect both sources through the load to negative disconnect our drains from no volts and connect those up to positive so now my drains are connected to positive so what i've got is the load on the source connected to no volts over here come on what are you playing at there we are no we're not uh got the got the what the le the load from this source down to no volts and the load from this down to no volts and this connected to positive nothing's lit so what i'm going to try to do is to switch on this gate by connecting it to positive and then this gate by connecting it to positive. So let's have a go with that. Hopefully when I touch there that switches that FET on giving me a green LED and if I switch this FET on I get a red LED. So what was happening Let's try it again then. So what's happened when I connect this gate to positive, it switches this FET on. This FET then 
allows the current to flow down through the FET, not through the, res the diode because it's reverse biased, but down through the FET and through the red LED and down to no volts. Similarly, the other side, when I switch this one on, the current comes down through the positive, down, it can't get through the diode again because it's reverse biased, through the FET, down through the source, and out through the green LED to the no volts. Thus showing us that each of our FETs can work individually and can be switched on. If I remove my positive then, what I want to do is to show how it would work if we were using over discharge. Now, so that the cell can discharge, we must have the over discharge FET on. So this one's got to be on. So when this is on, the current comes down through these diodes down and goes out here. So what this one needs to be off and this one needs to be on for our over discharge. So which way around did I say? Put this one on. So we've got this one on for our over discharge. And we said that our over discharge pin is this one here. So while our voltage is above 2.5, then that's okay. It keeps it on, it's discharging. We can see we've got a current flowing. But as soon as the voltage drops below 2.5, then the DWO1 switches that FET off and both FETs go off. What about charging? If we want to look at charging then, it's the opposite way around. The current's coming in at this side and off at that side. So we need this one to be off and this one to be on. So now when we switch on the uh, over charge FET, nothing's happening. But if we start charging, then the current's flowing through. We can see both red LEDs lit and therefore this would charge until it gets to the 4.2 volts when it switches off. So essentially that's the charging and discharging and how this dual FET chip works. Need to have another little look at that because I still find it difficult to understand. Can't get my head around it really. Because let's have a look at charging. When I'm charging, the voltage is going in to the top of the cell and out of the bottom of the battery. So the current's flowing from battery note volts to charger note volts. So the current's got to flow from battery note volts. It goes through this diode and then through this FET, which is the charging FET, the overcharging FET, back to note volts on the charger. As soon as it's charged, as soon as it detects it's 4.2 volts, then the overcharging FET goes off and therefore we have a situation where the current can't go anywhere and so therefore everything switches off. The opposite applies on discharging. If we think of discharging, cell goes through a load to the note volts of the discharge board and then back to the battery. So the current is flowing in the opposite direction to what it was for charging. So now the current flows along, goes through this diode round, through this FET, the over discharge FET, which is on until the voltage gets below 2.5 volts, when this switches off, and we're back to the situation of both being off, nowhere for the current to go. So yeah, that's my sort of analysis of how this particular chip works. I've enjoyed going through it, it's been really interesting. Hope I got all that right, but it's bye for now. Bye.